The views expressed are not necessarily those of KSCJ and Powell Broadcasting Company. This program is not intended to replace the advice of doctors or other clinical providers. Consult with your practitioner to ensure the proper course of action for you. Welcome to When Things Aren't Going Well on AM 1360 FM 94.9 KSCJ. This program is dedicated to your mental health wellness and brought to you by Family Services, a United Way partner agency. Here's your host, Art Silva. Good morning, Siouxland. I'm Art Silva, and welcome to When Things Aren't Going Well. This show is dedicated to your mental wellness and how you can help yourself navigate the daily highway of life. Our show is brought to you by Family Services, a United Way partner agency serving the Siouxland community. Joining me today from Family Services is Chief Operating Officer Brenda Geisinger and Licensed Therapist Rosie Strunk. Morning, Brenda. Good morning, Rosie. Good morning, Art. Glad to have you here today. And um, I'll tell you, it's the uh, end of the week. And uh, today um, we got a, a topic, uh, I think, that um, pretty much uh, any everybody can talk about in all aspects. But before we get into that, uh, ladies, what do you do at Boys and Girls Home? Brenda? I oversee the day-to-day operations for our inpatient program for children and outpatient services for all ages. Do you know something about kids, huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay, and Rosie? I'm a clinical therapist at Family Services, and I work with all ages of people. Oh, great. And Rosie, yeah, for folks of you that don't know this, has quite a career. Uh, she's been dedicated to this for all her whole life, and we're so fortunate to have her, as is the community. So, okay, <laughs> checks in the mail, Rosie, okay? Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Good to you know. <laughs> okay, today, again, we're going to talk about our topic is grief. And uh, I guess the first thing we can do is... Um, Let's define grief. Do you want to take that, Rosie? Sure, I'll take that. Um, Grief is a natural response to something that has happened in your life that's uh, regarding a loss or maybe a big change. And it's a uh, circumstance that many of us deal with in so many different ways. It can be something about work. It can be something about a death of a pet. It could be death of a, a loved one. And it's an emotional reaction that we go through. So it's an emotional process that all of us go through. And there's stages of that that we all go through. So looking at, at grief, um, you, you brought up a couple of other topics. It's, it's, usually it's just uh, when you look at a loved one. But it can be a lot of other things uh, mm-hmm. uh, affecting grief. Brenda, yep. your thoughts? Absolutely. It can be, you know, like Rosie mentioned, the loss of a job. It can be loss of a pet. I think a lot of people assume grief is associated with the death of a loved one or a close relationship you have. Um, But it really can go across anything and that process you have to go through going through that loss. I know you could have a a grief could be you could have a change in routine. Um, uh, Let's say your church closed. Um, There could be some could there be some grief associated with that, Rosie? Oh, heavens yes, because it's a, you have a pattern. It's a routine that you go to like every Sunday or Saturday or whatever it is. And now all of a sudden you're trying to figure out what am I going to do differently? How am I going to be able to accomplish what I need to accomplish with my um, church activity or whatever? And so you, you go through stages of trying to figure out, um, you know, what should I do first? And sometimes it might be you might have a sense of being angry like, gosh, you know, this is, I don't like this. <laughs> I don't like this. Now I got to figure out what I'm going to do kind of thing. So, so what I'm hearing and, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, grief is a natural reaction uh, that we all have in it, all have inside of us. And I guess how we react to it is different uh, from all of us. Is that going to be a true statement? Yeah. I think that all of us have our own different personalities. We all have our different ways of how to cope with things. We also all have our different support people or resources that we have. And so how we go through grief and how we process it through um, is different for all of us. And we have to respect what that is for each of us in a sense. Well, what are some of the signs of grief? What are some of the the outward signs that we might recognize uh, other than the obvious ones of grief? Well, I think grief can have physical signs, emotional signs, and spiritual signs. Those are the things that I think about. Um, physical signs might be a loss of appetite, might be fatigue, might have trouble sleeping, um, might um, not eat well in a sense. So there can be some physical kinds of things. 
emotional might be you're on an emotional roller coaster. You're having lots of different um, conflicting types of emotions from anger to sadness to fear. Uh, you might go numb at times because you just don't know how to deal with, with what's going on in your life in regards to the change or the, or the loss. So there's those um, emotional process. And then the spiritual thing, too, is where sometimes we question, you know, why did this happen? What's going on? You know, why did this, you know, and so to some higher power. And so we might not go to church. We might isolate ourselves. We might stay away from things that we would normally do because we're questioning um, those kinds of things. So I see it as, you know, physical, emotional, spiritual. Uh, those are the ones that I'm thinking about. So those are that could be good signs for people to look for um, with anybody going through grief. And I think sometimes we anticipate um, someone experiencing grief. And then how do we handle talking with them, and what to say, what not to say? Uh, a lot of times, um, I'm out silver and listening to when things aren't going well. And with me from Family Services is our Chief Operating Officer, Brenda Geisinger, and clinical therapist, Rosie Strunk. And today we're discuss- discussing grief. Rosie, let me ask you, what happens when grief is not addressed? There's a word that they call that. It's like incomplete grief. And what ends up happening is that I see it as that we're stuck. We're just mm-hmm. rewinding over and over again. And so we're, we're continuing to be numb. We're continuing to, um, you know, emotionally not talk about what's going on with us in regards to the loss that we have or the change that we're doing. So we're just stuck. And then what ends up happening is that we might have more feelings of depression or isolation. And sometimes people get into trying to numb the feelings. And so they might get into doing some drinking or other kinds of stuff that that they're thinking is a way to help, but it's keeping things bottled up. And so it's not you haven't completed your process of grief because it's bottled up inside. Miranda, you know, children. uh at a different age, how do they demonstrate uh, their feelings <clears throat> of grief? Kids may act out, become very angry, um, may resort to a lower developmental age. So if they're eight, they may start behaving as if they're two. Um, a lot of times there's a lot of crying or isolating, withdraw, shutting down, not wanting to be around their friends. Um, they may resort to the drinking or drugs or um, get addicted to video games or TV and not engaging in activities at school or with their friends. Um, just a lot of different similar symptoms, but age more towards children behavior. Okay. The, um, you know, we've gone through a period of time last year and we're just coming out of it. And there's a light at the end of the tunnel and it's not a train. And that's with COVID. And how people um, dealt with grief over the last year was unprecedented, and not only in our history, but in, I think in humankind, where we just couldn't have that final goodbye or what we can, how do we handle this? Because it was uncharted territory. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. have you had any experience with with people coming and dealing with COVID and grief? Uh, I have had some clients who have had people who have um, passed away and weren't able to do their final kind of processing that they normally do. And so there's ways that uh, I've suggested and we've talked about where they might write a letter to the person and go to the grave site and do their whatever they would want to have said that weren't able to, they weren't able to say that. Uh, I've also had people um, gather and have memory parties and have, um, you know, talk about happy times and what they remember and, you know, enjoy those types of things that you weren't able to do because you weren't able to gather as a family either or to do the whatever services you normally do. And so it's like, how can we do that in the way that's going to help us continue our process of going through whatever emotional things that we're experiencing? So. So it can be a fun kind of thing. It's still sad because you're still, you know, trying to get through that. But I think sometimes those memories, when we start going through them, we, we, we recognize um, the value of the person that we had and that we also also accept that, okay, they're not here. And so, but they're still with us in spirit. <laughs> it's really nice. And I really like the suggestion there of um, the memories and uh, think of the happy times and 
a letter, all the things that help make you feel a little better that you did the best you could do in, in saying your goodbye or how you felt about somebody and their life and what that life meant to you. So there before the grace of God go all of us who did not have to go through that terrible experience, but there were over 500,000 people in this country, families that were affected by that. And I don't think I can go ignore it. I think it's out there somewhere. And if you need help, if you know of someone that needs help, please give us a call at Family Services. Uh, that's 293-4900. Uh, we're coming up on our break right now, so we'll take a little pause for the cause, and we'll return shortly with When Things Aren't Going Well right here on KSCJ. Let's face it, that happens to all of us. However, the pandemic has compounded all of our lives and activities. Even the simplest tasks seem harder. Hi, I'm Brenda Geisinger, the Chief Operating Officer at the Boys and Girls Home and Family Services. Family Services is a United Way partner agency serving children and families of our community, and we're here to help. If you'd like to learn more about Family Services, please contact us via email, website, Facebook, or phone Mary Pickens. At Family Services, we change lives. Welcome back to When Things Aren't Going Well on KSCJ. Here's Art Silva. Welcome back to When Things Aren't Going Well. I'm Art Silva along with Brenda Geisinger and Rosie Strong from Family Services. During our first half hour of our show, we discussed the symptoms and signs of grief. Let's talk about how we can help. So um, what are some of the stages that help dealing with grief? Rosie? Well, first of all, I'm going to talk about the stages of grief. Because I think that's something that all of us go through. And the first stage is that we're in denial. It's like one of those things, well, why did this happen? How could this happen? You know, we're in that shock stage. And I think denial helps us kind of grasp of something's different and that it helps us with emotionally kind of, kind of pace ourselves. Then we go through a stage of anger where we're concerned and angry about things. Then we go through bargaining. Why did this happen? Why should this have happened? That kind of stuff. Um, and we all do that. Uh, my sister passed away not too long ago, and I was going to myself, it should have been me. Why shouldn't it have been me rather than her? She's got lots of grandkids kind of thing. So, and then we go through a part of depression where we have the sadness, where we have the emotional part, and then we get to the acceptance where we recognize this is a change. We accept the change, whatever that is in the sense of the loss, and then we continue to move forward in our life. And so those are stages that we all go through. Do they happen in that order? Not necessarily. They happen all over the board. But we all end up going through those different stages of, of grief. Brenda? Yeah, I think one of the things Rosie mentioned is it, it, it doesn't happen linear with those stages. You can be depressed and then go back to bargaining um, and you can be in one stage for a while or a couple of stages at one time. Um, but it is a process, and you have to kind of work through that at your own pace um, and be aware of those things that you may have to experience or think about. Are there, are there ways in which we can uh, deal with grief or look at grief and help with people with grief issues? Yeah, I think that um, I think the, one of the things, there's a lot of things, but I think it's important to be supportive. Um, to listen to the person, to allow them to have whatever feelings that they're having, um, to not be judgmental, because sometimes we have our own view on stuff, but not to be judgmental to a, to a person, um, to offer help in some way. Sometimes just offering, hey, can I bring over a meal? As they're, and they recognize that somebody's there for us in a sense. And so I think the, the thing is to be supportive, to listen, to affirm what they're feeling, and that their feelings are okay, um, to offer help. And sometimes it might just be, we're just there. We're just there giving them support. So it's like looking at how can I be helpful to you as you're in this process. And so people will let us know, in a sense. Um, and I think the big thing is is just to be open to whatever their process is and, and respect that. When is help not helpful well, I think there are some things that we need to be careful about to not say, like, um, get over it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <too> <laughs> Move, on. Move on. Um, you know, clean out their room or, you know, whatever that might be. I think those things we need to be careful about. I think it's important to be careful about not telling them how they feel. 
we're not the judge of that, and they're the judge of their feelings. Um, to to not um, tell them that you're going to fix it in some way because we can't fix it. Uh, they everybody needs to go through their own process of fixing or processing whatever that is in a sense. So those are some things that might be um, useful in a sense of I think sometimes we try to move people quicker when they're not ready to do move. That. Yeah, mm-hmm. Brenda, the same with children. Very much. I think there's always the saying, time heals all wounds. And sometimes time seems to be stuck or, you know, not moving at all. And it's not our place to push that timeline along. And really, the time is about learning the memories and cherishing those memories. And you'll heal when you're ready to heal and being patient with that. You know, I always felt like um, ways you can help yourself uh, dealing with it, um, the memories, um, the spirit of the person's always with you. Um, whenever you get together with families and stuff, you, you never forget those good times. But let me ask you this. Um, can grieving people self-help? Definitely. We can definitely help ourselves. And part of that might be educating ourselves, getting some reading material that helps us kind of work through some of the things that are um, our own kind of processing. There's a book for that. It's a children's book, and I use this also for adults. It's called The Invisible Spring, Strength, Invisible Strength, and it's a great children's book that lets you know that you still have that lifeline in a connection. sense, the memory, the connections, uh, and so sometimes reading books can be helpful. We can also um, look at getting support groups, uh, church support groups. There are other grieving types of groups that can be also helpful. And sometimes we need to go see a therapist because that's what we need to do in the sense of processing some stuff through. I think the other thing um, I have suggested sometimes with children is journaling about your thoughts and feelings Mm -hmm. and then also journaling about the person that you have lost or the loss that you're going through. During the time as it passes, you may forget some things and it's always nice to pull out the journal and read the happy memories that you wrote down. And then also reflect maybe on the other journal of how you felt then to how you feel now. Um, And just kind of working through that. That movement of a pen or a pencil on a paper can be very soothing for people. And you kind of get lost in your own world and you can just let it flow. All right, go ahead, Rosie. The other thing that I was going to mention, which is journaling, because anniversary times come up. Yes. (laughs) Holiday times come up. Birthdays come up. And so sometimes how we can help ourselves is to recognize that those times are coming and how we might do uh, something a little differently in respects to that. And I've had somebody write a letter to their mom uh, who passed away, and when the anniversary date came up, she read the letter in that year's time. So there's, mm-hmm. those, are, those are things, too, that you can kind of help yourself with. I know families, I, I know our families at, at holiday time leave a seat at the table the mm-hmm. first year. Uh, just mm-hmm. to kind of like, we didn't forget you, we're still here, and I think mm-hmm. that helps to uh, keep that spirit alive. Mm-hmm. Uh, you yeah. certainly, after so many years, it's just a, um, the experience and the bonding. That's never going to go away. You know, hopefully, it was a very pleasant one. When I see people going through grief and anguish, um, I see a lot of really mag- magnified with grandparent, the loss of a grandparent with, with a child, and the loss of a pet. I'm not Mm -hmm. trying to categorize these and make one more important than the other, but those are the ones that stand out to me. Mm -hmm. And you really kind of get the feeling, usually with children losing a grandparent, Mm -hmm. uh, you really get that and their emotion and Mm -hmm. losing a pet. Any, any thoughts on that? Well, I'm going to say pets are really important for people and they're like their, their children in a sense. And that can be a process also of going through, through the whole grieving um, stages And I think that people need their own time to do that. Like I've had uh, people who have come in and said, you know, I don't want to put my pet's toys away because it's my memories there. And I said, well, don't do that. Well, people are telling me to do that. And I said, you do what you feel comfortable with. So those kinds of things are really important. I'm going to just say a little bit real quick. Um, Not too long ago or quite some time ago, I worked with a coworker and we did a program together. She retired. I had grief for a year with her Mm -hmm. because I was angry that she retired and she left, in a sense. I was sad. 
Um, and it, I had to change things up for myself. And it took me a good year to get through that. And I got to the point where, okay, she's gone. I can get through this kind of thing. So when you talk about pets, jobs, things like that, it does. Sometimes there's things that affect us in different ways. And we have to go through our process. Well, we're coming up on the end of our show for this week, and we want to leave you with a, a little humor uh, for your mental wellness. Uh, we've talked about a pretty serious topic mm-hmm. today, and, um, and, and again, it's, it's, it's not the end. It's the beginning of something new. Mm-hmm. So let's leave you a little humor for your mental wellness uh, and a little advice. Never criticize someone until you have walked a mile in their shoes. That way, when you criticize them, you'll be a mile away and you'll have their shoes. <laughs> <laughs> thank you Brenda Rosie for sharing your expertise and in and, um, and your thoughts and your personal experience with us today also want to thank our listening audience for joining us this morning I give a shout out to Travis Morgan Luke Strand and the Sioux City Musketeers good luck tonight in Omaha we'll be back next Saturday morning at 7 a.m. right here on KSCJ 1360 a.m. 94.9 FM have a great week may the sun shine on you trails to you until we meet again happy trails to you keep smiling until then happy trails to you